for your patience, guys. Okay, so we're welcoming um, Matt and Martin from uh, DBS, so let's give them a round of applause. DBS. I'm from DBS Music Plymouth and uh, I'm representing DBS Bristol. Um, we also have another campus in Manchester but it was potentially a little bit too far for them to come today. Uh, so we're here in lieu of Manchester. Cool. Has anyone heard of DBS Music before? I'm interested. Show of hands. Two. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, we're going to do the kind of pandemic style. Next slide, please. <laughs> Um, yeah, of course, so we've got a whole range of courses um, across all our three centres. Um, I'm the program leader for the electronic music production strand. And um, yeah, so uh, a wide choice that kind of can suit whatever sort of specialism or career direction you're heading in. Um, yeah, okay, next slide, please stand. So uh, what we're really looking for uh, in terms of students to come to us are people that are really passionate about recording uh, music and sound and audio in general. This can also include video, uh, graphics and game development too. Um, we're really looking for people that are interested in learning industry standards and techniques that are uh, emerging, I suppose emerging technologies might be a slightly better way of phrasing it, um, building innovative new skills, um, people that are looking to learn and develop skills and workflows inside of Logic, Live, Pro Tools and other industry standard production um, software. Um, and also, most importantly, those that are really interested in building a career in um, the audio industries. Uh, I think that's something that we're all quite passionate about. I believe most, well I believe, I know, um, all of the teaching staff emanate from some sort of industry background. Um, and there's plenty of links to be uh, made both with your peers and with the staff uh, on site. I'm sure you all kind of uh, know how much of a big industry it is the creative um, world. 5.5 billion, it's sort of ridiculous yeah. that the UK brings in every yearly. Um, and in economic downturn, which we're in right now, it's the music industry goes like that. So it's a nice way to uh, move into a good career in the music industry. Down at DBS, we can help further that as well. Cool. Um, yeah, so just, a, um, some, just some, the acronyms at the top are electronic music production degree, music production sound engineering, and SMT. Sound and music technology. Yeah, um, so they slightly differ. On the electronic music production stand, you'd be learning uh, lots of different types of synthesis techniques. So, for example, over the first, um, over the three years, you might learn to develop your own plugins. Uh, build those plugins and develop your own sound, <coughs> stepping away a little bit from the kind of preset world and the already um, <coughs> uh, pre prepared sounds and design your own toolkit that help, then again could help you define your own sound to sound like you because you've built the tools that are going to make the music. Um, MPSE, so Music Production Sound Engineering. This largely deals with uh, working in a recording environment, largely capturing performances. Um, so it may be more suited to those of you that are uh, instrument orientated or not. Um, still covers quite a wide base of music production, but there's maybe not quite the emphasis um, on things like de development or plug-in development um, and synthesis if there is on the MV. Um, and then the third music orientated degree we offer is the SMT which to some degree straddles the fence of um, both courses. There are a few other little differences which we'll go into in a bit. Um, but you can see you'll deal with recording and mixing and synthesis. Um, and the real advantage to the SMT that sets it apart from the others is that there's an industry placement in the second year. So you actually get to go and work in industry and gain some, some real world experience, which is what it's all about. Um, so non-music, uh, stri strictly non-music uh, orientated degrees, we also offer uh, music and sound for films. So this deals largely with um, producing and scoring for film um, alongside moving image. And then also uh, a new degree that we're only starting to run this year is called sound design. Um, and this sort of more caters for those that are interested in going into the audio side of maybe gaming um, or more immersive 
spatial audio applications. So this is not only, it, it, it tends to deal with sound design, so capture, um, recording, also quite a, an extensive amount of synthesis, but also um, programming, um, and, and I suppose not game development, but working in development engines such as Unreal, whereby um, there's currently like a bit of a gap in terms of education to, to, to courses that fulfill this criteria. You can certainly go and study game development and you can go and do music, but there's not really a lot that bridges the gap between the two, I don't think. Um, Okay, cool. So the electronic music production strands. Uh, yeah, so developing skills of electronic music producer. Um, Utilise the hardware instruments and effects. Um, we'll show you a little bit of some stuff I've brought in today as well. And DBS is uh, great for equipment wise, uh, pretty cutting edge technology. We've just installed um, some Dolby Atmos systems, which Mark will tell you a little bit about in a second, uh, which is quite a popular buzzword in the music technology world of spatial audio. Anyone who subscribes to Apple Music wants to look at spatial audio uh, to be able to listen to music in different kind of non-stereo formats. Um, yeah, and the music production and sound engineering strand, you'll have most access to the recording studios down at um, our centres, um, which are uh, fantastic facilities. And we have um, SSL, uh, Neve, um, Genesis desks that are really um, world, world uh, industry standard. So once you learn how to use one of the mixing desks down at DBS, you can go and work in all of the professional studios around the world and be confident with them. Yeah. Uh, um, so, sorry, this one's got its own page because it wouldn't fit. Uh, so. The FDA, um, the thing that differentiates the FDA from maybe the other ones is that it is, oh sorry, the sound and music uh, technology, FDA, uh, is that it's actually only a two year degree. Um, and I think this is worth mentioning because uh, maybe it's, signing up for a three year course is potentially a little bit of a big investment when you're 18. Um, my parents might have a few things to say if you signed up for a three year phone contract at 18, you know, things change. Um, and the FDA is kind of built not around a phone contract, but around this idea that you might choose to change your specialisms. So after you complete the two years of study, you will leave with a foundation degree. However, you've then got the option to stay on for a third year or go to another institution and complete the top up year. And you can then choose your area of specialisation. Mm -hmm. So that could be that after completing the FDA, where, like I said, straddles the fence of both um, electronic music production and sound engineering, you could choose to go and specialise in electronic music production or sound engineering or sound for film, um, or potentially any other number of courses that offer top-up year programs. Um, at the end of that, you will leave with a full BA degree. Um, it's not a cheaper option, it's not a quicker, easier, dumbed-down option, it's just more suited maybe to those that don't want to commit to a full three years. Um, you also, of course, have the year in industry. The FDA is built very much as being quite hands-on, practical course, and so an industry placement should hopefully give you a bit of a head start um, in making some links and networking um, and, and getting, getting your foot in the door, I suppose. Uh, and then we've got, I think we must go to the next one again. There we go. So, uh, the facilities that we have, like Matt's already briefly touched on these. Um, so, we've got proper recording studios, proper microphones, um, bantam patch bays, everything that you would expect in a real studio. Um, and this is really quite important, this idea that when you walk into somewhere, you can just immediately get on and begin working. You understand enough about how a mixing desk works to be able to apply that knowledge to any manufacturer or setting. You understand how a studio is configured. You understand the workflow. Um, so we have some seriously good quality um, studios and live rooms. Uh, we have, of course, VR and AR laboratories, or labs, I should say, laboratory sounds a bit too technical, doesn't it? Um, where you can work alongside maybe game students or other students that are working in or developing technologies that could use immersive um, both video and audio technologies. Uh, we have post-production studios, you can see one of them here, uh, where we've got um, pretty untouchably brilliant modular synth setups. I don't know if anyone's really into that here. 
some of you will be, I'm quite sure. Um, we also have a selection of, of, of poly and mono synths, um, and it's just a great environment to go and actually write some tunes in um, or work on existing uh, music. Yeah, they're really nice creative spaces, aren't they? Absolutely. Um, they're, they're kind of built up and evolved over the years, and uh, DBS has been around for about 25 years now, so <laughs> the, you know, the, these systems are built to uh, have fun and be creative. Um, and like Martin said, the modular synthesis stuff in there is really, really great fun. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, Dolby Atmos, this is something that you're going to keep hearing about, whether you choose to pursue education in music or not, it is the latest and the greatest. Um, effectively, it's a surround sound immersive audio um, system. However, you have, uh, you have speakers on the ceiling as well as on the sides. It offers so many additional possibilities um, in terms of surround sound application for games, particularly is clearly where it's targeted, but also music, film. And the beauty of it is it collapses to a um, binaural image, so you can actually just put on some headphones and receive a pseudo surround image um, that is representative of what you would receive or you'd hear um, in, in a Dolby Atmos environment like a cinema or what have you. Um, so we've recently invested quite heavily in creating um, Dolby Atmos production studios. Um, these are brand new PNC, um, I can't remember the precise name, but these are absolutely state-of-the-art um, uh, speakers. Uh, so much so that PNC are using the environments that we've created as um, advertising material for simply what can be done inside of Dolby Atmos. I actually had a session in one of these rooms yesterday, and it is, you, you, you've simply got to be there to understand what it's like to hear sounds coming from all around you. Um, it is really quite moving. It's called immersive audio for a reason, and that's because it really does put you right in the heart of the action. Um, so definitely something to um, think about. Uh, think. Cool. Uh, yeah, so I thought this was a nice picture here. This is um, a chap called Fen Mark who graduated from DBS um, a couple of years ago. But here he's doing a talk um, at the Athenaeum in Plymouth um, about his uh, uh, modular synthesis company where he designs the individual components for a synthesizer. And he started DBS as a very kind of shy uh, chap, but here he is kind of talking to 200 people, very similar to this, about his, you know, his, his company. Um, and I continue to see little um, pictures of people's systems with his bits in them all around the world, which is, uh, which is pretty cool, pretty cool, yeah. Uh, and this is what, what was that, uh, what's called an electronic music weekend do. It's just some of the kind of extracurricular stuff that we do. Uh, we basically just hired a big um, uh, arena in Plymouth, which was pretty uh, uh, popular in the 1970s. Arnold Schwarzenegger won the world championship down there. The Beatles had played there. And we thought, right, we'll put on a big do there. And um, we had a lot of manufacturers come down. Um, we installed an immersive sound system in one of the rooms, which was um, on the same tip as what um, Martin was talking about, the immersive audio. It's basically 12 speakers um, and two subs. And we used a, a mixing desk to um, ping sounds all around those manually by hand. And then we also use different approaches of like using uh, DAW like Ableton Live to automate that process and make it really immersive. Um, so immersive that people were spinning out and were walking in the room. Um, and um, yeah, just an example really of a showcase at the end of uh, the academic year where people and students go and show off their wares and their creations. Um, yeah, we do that sort of stuff all the time. We kind of pride ourselves on extracurricular in terms of gigs and trips and things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, should we see if this will play in the audio? And if not, we'll skip it. Um, will audio work? Or if not, we can just skip it. So it's not going to work. Ah, uh,
Cool, so um, uh, who plays games? Play gamers here? Quite a few, yeah. Um, so, um, that was um, uh, Morgan, who was doing, we did like a live stream event, and he was uh, streaming some stuff that was been created in the uni, and he was very inspired by uh, Nick Gordon, I don't know if you, anybody might be familiar with, who created the soundtrack for the Doom game. Uh, but he was using a process of just using simple sine waves and then routing about four different versions of those and just turning them into big feedback loops, infinite feedback loops, and a bit similar to what I'm going to show you here shortly. Uh, but starting off with something very basic and just feeding that infinite loop back on itself and adding those harmonic content. Uh, real kind of on that, like, metal ambient vibe sort of thing. Um, anyway, yeah, yeah, good. Um, um, this here is... Um, in the Plymouth Guildhall, and uh, we had the opportunity for music production sound engineering students to go and record the Plymouth Orchestra. And then, I don't know if you can see the mic set up in the, on the stage there, but that's what's called the Decatree um, technique, which is not great for small rooms, but for big orchestras, it's the perfect way to capture a really good stereo sound. Um, and we recorded this and produced the music for the orchestra as just an example of one of the things where we kind of get out into the real world industry and we'll record and work with a client to produce some music as part of the degree. Cool. <coughs> um, yeah. Yeah, so a big part of uh, the degree is obviously drawing in people from industry to talk to you guys. Um, about maybe how they got started, uh, how you can get started, uh, and, and, and what the job really entails. Um, so that's a lovely noise, isn't it? Can anyone else pick that up? It's your tinnitus. That might yeah. say it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so these are some of the people that we've heard in the past, but this list continues to grow. This certainly isn't um, everybody that's come and had a chat. Again, yeah. like I said, a lot of the a lot of the lecturing staff are quite involved um, in, in the industry anyway, so these are just people yes. that they know that will come um, and have a chat with you guys. Yeah. Uh, it's a really, really useful way of, of making contact um, and also just learning how the industry works, seeing what people, um, uh, seeing how people work, I suppose. Like one that forever keeps coming up is the culprit um, masterclass. Uh, he's maybe a few years ago now, but like his sound design is just second to none. Um, mm -hmm. And students just love to try and understand how he gets such incredible noises out of stock Ableton Live devices. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Gareth Williams as well, he, he was the original designer of what's called the Lima software. It was the first ever touch, touch screen, so now we kind of find it quite normal to use iPads. Uh, Lima was the first one that used the kind of touch approach. Um, and you could call it touch OSC, where you could basically control a parameter over, over the air uh, wirelessly. But he has some really interesting <coughs> insights, and it's, you know, one of the reasons why we get professionals in all the time is um, he uh, built, built and designed the application, but it was the first ever application used in space, which is really cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. they basically took it up to the space station. And um, they synced up with Kraftwerk, who were playing live down in Berlin. And there, believe it or not, there's a 20 second round trip delay latency from space. <laughs> so they moved the parameter, and then Kraftwerk down in the uh, live concert, up it goes, in a jam in with the space station. Uh, but I found that really, really quite cool. That's excellent. Yeah. I think just one more to draw attention to mm. Sylvia Massey. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys have heard of Sylvia Massey. No, nothing. Well, if you wanted to know what it sounds like to put an electric guitar through a, a pickled cucumber, <laughs> that is someone to go and look or up. Or throw a guitar off a cliff. Or throw a guitar yeah. off a cliff. Yeah. Um, a very successful producer that's known for some fairly experimental production techniques, I think it's fair to say. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah and if you can see that writing on there, you've got extremely good eyesight. Yeah. Yeah. So you can't see anything, it's blurry. Um, but this is just an example, really, that we do in enhancement weeks and industry weeks. It happens mid-semester, uh, where visiting professionals come in and we do a whole bunch of workshops. And this bottom bit here, which is Ableton Live, which is a really cool uh, electronic music, um, DAW for live performers and 
uh, producers. They came down to, um, to DBS and we did a bunch of workshops, but we hired a club, so we did mastering for the club environment, but we did it inside the club so students could bring their music, play their music on a really cool Function 1 sound system, um, and we ran some workshops on how to master music for the particular club environment. Um, yeah, 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 just a short list really of some yeah, people who have come down. Trip, so I just want to click, click that once more. So does anyone know what that building is? <laughs> Any takers? No? <laughs> uh, so this is quite a famous Berlin-based club. It's particularly known for not letting people in through the door. Uh, super exclusive. You've probably seen it mean. Yeah. yeah, it's been mean to death. Yeah, it's called Bergheim. Yeah, and it opens on Thursday night and it closes on Tuesday morning. Um, and yeah, it's very notoriously hard to get in. And um, anyway, we go to Berlin every year um, as part of our second and third year trip. Um, and we go and visit a music conference called Superbooth. So, um, Superbooth is a brilliant. Um, trade, not trade show, sorry, a music conference which is about six to seven thousand people that are producers, musicians, um, programmers, um, marketing people, geeks, nerds, the whole lot, um, uh, and lots of stars like Hans Zimmer and people along those lines. Um, then we go there for three days and we watch a whole bunch of lectures and we meet people and we network. Um, and we also, in the evening, try and get into Berghain. Uh, and fail miserably every year. Um, but um, it's, it's a really, really wicked trip that happens. Um, in, it's some of the highlights of what we did last year was we went and visited um, Head Speaker Manufacturer, which was really great to see how a speaker was manufactured from the ground up. Um, and you might have heard of like Adam Audio and Focusrite and Head, they all intertwine. And, you know, it's nice to see how the uh, how they prototype equipment and how it goes to market. Uh, really good insight. Um, so we go on that trip every year. Um, yeah, yeah, cool. Um, uh, yeah, cool. Um, real work? Is this real work? Uh, I don't know. I've never actually been there, but uh, I believe there's trips to yeah. Real World. So yes. Real World's quite local to Bristol, Bath. Uh, it's Peter Gabriel's studio. It's kind of a, a, an iconic stalwart in terms of studio design. It was built from the ground up, and it was built ethically as well. Uh, I read an article once about the consideration that went into the materials used for the air conditioning ducts right. because they had to be both acoustically treated and um, ethically sourced. So, zero carbon footprint, mm -hmm. but functional. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so you can see that it's got quite a famous U-shaped mixing environment. I believe these are PMCs as well, aren't they? Yes. Um, and then you've got a lovely lake here. There's countless um, huge albums that have been mixed, recorded, mm -hmm. tracked in this environment. Mm -hmm. um, it's easily one of the UK's most iconic, well-known studios. Um, mm -hmm. I believe we've gone on trips there. Like yes, I, trips there have I haven't there. been there either, but my <laughs> colleagues, they take the students there. And um, Peter said that um, the last time that he went there, and um, the students that were with were like, no way, oh, we've got one of those desks. And he's like, yeah, that's the point. You've learned, been learning it for the last year, so you can jump straight in and use a professional world-class studio. Um, and it's a really, really good trip that uh, Pete organises where you will go up there and record uh, a band sitting on a, you know, a proper session, you know, not just a visit. Yeah. Cool. Next time. Um, so, yeah, this is super audio mastering. So, and if you're into mastering your music and you want to bring your music up to real commercial standards, Believe it or not, a lot of the mastering studios are actually in Devon and Somerset. Um, so we're in the right place. And a lot of the commercial records actually do get mastered here. Uh, people like the Chemical Brothers and Calvin Harris, they're all mastered in Devon. And um, this is just one facility, which is in Chadford. Um, and for the slightly older members of staff, maybe Tubular Bells, you might be with Tubular Bells. Um, they were the guys that um, set this original studio up there. But we go to visit and uh, sit in on a mastering session. Uh, really cool insight to see a pro studio. Um, and also as well, one of the alumni students who completed the course is the 
head technician, uh, head um, member staff and that. Cool. So um, then also uh, we have the professional arm of DBS, so much like how the BBC has a commercial arm, DBS also has a commercial arm. And what this means is that we actually can get in clients, and in some instances we can even often stu offer students um, paid work. Uh, particularly each year there's a couple of students that are taken on as interns to work in the studio. This can be on a selection of different projects. I know there's been some um, game apps that have been developed there. There's often quite a lot of mixing, um, film um, mixing and composition as well. Um, it's fairly well kitted out, I think it, well, professionally kitted out. Um, and this is in the main Bristol building, um, so you'll often see um, clients nipping in, nipping out. Um, it's a really good opportunity. Every time more hands on deck are needed, um, an email goes out and students have got the opportunity to apply. So often, or quite often I should say, it involves um, field recording as well, so going out microphones um, or sitting on a boat in damp weather trying to capture the noise of water or something to this effect. Um, and and it, again, it further um, reinforces uh, some good industry connections, some good industry experience, some real world actual doing I suppose that can set you up. Like we can only teach you so much, there's always that it goes for any discipline that you want to work in. Um, a bit like driving I suppose, you can set people up but you, you, you learn the most when you're, you're doing it for, for real um, and this will certainly help with that. Mm. Cool. Um, yeah, just an example of some of the um, recent graduates. Yes, uh, Bill Seller here, who I was just talking about before in the Mastery Studio, um, went on to work there. Uh, also set up his own company, True Peak. Uh, we have students at NBC, ITV, BBC, um, Disc Manufacturing Services, which are distribution for buying <coughs> CDs. Um, one student recently is just. Um, he is a radio presenter in the Falklands. Um, and yeah, yeah, so even some of the students have become on to become shooters and technicians and work for DBS. And it's also worth pointing out the number of active artists, I think, that we have yeah. enrolled as students. Um, I don't know if many of you have heard of Crossy, like drum and bass guy, he's doing quite well at the moment. He's, I think he might have just graduated, but he was one of our students. Uh, Anais is another one. Um, the list goes on. These are just two other things. Wolf Alice. Right there we go. Yeah. Um, but again, it's that whole networking argument. These are the people that you study alongside are going to be the people that not will drag you through the industry, but they're going to be your, your they're going to be a good um, list of contacts to to, to maintain. Um, if everybody's trying to get somewhere in the industry, invariably one or two of you will, and then those two will drag, not drag open doors for others. I think drag's not the right word. Open doors for others to break through a little bit. Okay, uh, we also offer an MA. I think you might be more suited to talk about this than myself. Well, I, I studied the MA myself, so uh, right. I'm not good to talk about it from a student perspective. Um, yeah, we, we run uh, an innovation of the sound MA. We also do two online MAs, which are electronic music production specialists um, and music production and sound engineering specialists. Um, they are both online, but the innovation of sound is face to face. Um, uh, just personally, on my own perspective, it, it was an absolutely brilliant course that uh, allowed me to set up a music technology company designing plugins, which is one of the things that I do and really focus down on my, my specialism. So um, it, it's very much centered on what you want to do, and you can build that around to realize a project in, in industry. Um, and that's a uh, part time two year. Um, degree that you could continue on. Uh, we have that at all our centres, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So, yes. yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, some interesting stuff like um, some of the students on there as well that the were in my class just alone were designed the full sound sets for electric cars, um, yeah, explored um, voice activated music production for the uh, less able or blind. People. So then basically you could activate um, a DAW's channel and set up some music and play music by voice, like a Siri, but for music. Yeah. Of course, yes. mm. um, so, uh, how to apply? The information is here. Um, 
do get in touch, give us a call. As this year progresses, you will all be handed more and more and more to ensure that you've got your UCAS applications uh, underway and completed. Um, I won't go into that too much. But we have some links here. Um, I think this slide is potentially going to be shared with you, or certainly the links will be provided to you, mm -hmm. and we're being filmed as well. Great. Um, I think the last slide is an individual Q&A. I was hoping for a QR code, but there is a QR yeah, code at the end, isn't there? Next one, yeah. if anyone wants to see There we go, the QR yeah. code. Um, you can ask us questions as well. Yeah. Um, also got a little bit of music to, to show you, but um, yeah, we're open for if anyone's got any direct questions. Anyone got any questions? No one? One, yes. Uh, right, oh, this is something that, that, that comes up. You're not alone at all. Um, we get students that, that, that use a variety of other platforms. Um, I've always thought that it doesn't matter, to be honest with you. Um, you should look to learn as many platforms as you can. Students often have this idea that it's really difficult to learn a door, and it's not. Um, you, learning Ableton will probably take you about an hour. Um, Honestly, it's so simple, isn't it? If you've got the basics of knowing how to use Reason, you're just applying what you already know to using Ableton. Uh, I'm not showing off, but I myself can use all of them. Uh, and I've not spoken to Matt about it, but I'd be willing to bet you're pretty FA with all of the platforms. Yeah. It won't do you any harm. It means you can collaborate with anybody, you can walk into any environment and learn to use them. Tuition is provided um, for, for most, but I'd say that... Um, I don't think you asked this directly, but I think it's fair to say that most of our courses um, operate on um, Ableton primarily as a compositional tool, Pro Tools as an engineering tool, um, but it's not uncommon to have students using um, Logic, which is also uh, available at the centres, but um, Reason, I think there's another one that looks like a strawberry. Uh, FL, yeah. Yeah. FL Studio, I think yeah. Looks, yeah, lots of students use that. But no, absolutely, you know, if you if you use a particular DAW, that would, we would um, <coughs> absolutely encourage that. Um, but throughout the course, you know, we do do quite a lot of work with Ableton Logic and Pro Tools, but we provide the training for all of those um, platforms. And the kind of expectation that if you were sign up for the electronic music production course, you would probably end up doing some performances, nightclubs, and Ableton is kind of you know a good industry standard approach to, to use for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. Good question. Reason excellent as well. I started on that reason one myself. Brilliant. Flips around. It's very modular. You know, it's great. Keep going with that. Yeah. Can I ask a question, guys? What are your kind of like, entry requirements for kind of like one of the degree courses? Is it just the UCAS points? Yes, exactly. Yeah, um, obviously recommended English and maths, but yeah, that's not essential. Um, yeah, and obviously we've taken board on any experience, um, yeah. the stuff that you're doing you know, in the industry already. I think it, it's fair to say, yeah, come and speak to us, really. Like, um, everyone's assessed individually. Um, there is a, an expectation for you to complete 104 UCAS points, I believe. Um, but we have got students that have far exceeded that and students that have also not met that and have gone on to be some of our best um, our, our best kind of tutees really uh, so do come in, speak to us it's, it's, it's not game over if um, the results you get don't quite align with what you were hoping uh, any other questions? ok, cool um, shall I make some music yeah. to finish? Okay. Yeah. Um, so the, the clip that we were playing earlier with um, uh, Morgan, the student up there, where we were using like feedback techniques. Um, so have we got any guitarists here? A few, a few guitarists. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so um, in that kind of world and feedback domain, uh, I presume you probably held it up to the speaker and some of that, right, where the strings uh, resonate with pickup and then it kind of goes around the amp, you get that infinite feedback loop, um, which is quite nice as well in some, in some, uh, yeah, in some, some fields. Um, I'm sure some of you have experienced, not all of you, um, feedback with PA systems and microphones, so 
I mean, you get that whole <laughs> round of people nodding in that court. Um, uh, so, um, and that's not quite desirable sometimes because you have like a frequency response in the microphone um, and you have a frequency response in the PA and then you've also got the room resonance kind of like getting in the mix. So you get that kind of like undesirable feedback that's not quite so nice. Um, so anyway, so I was going to show you a little um, technique of how to use this um, mixing desk here. And I presume you've all done some work with mixing desks? Yeah? Yeah, so, yeah, some, yeah? Um, so, um, the, you only really need the basic understanding of what Zilla is. So Zilla is, you can send stuff back around the system. Um, so, what I was going to do is just demonstrate how to use this mixer, if you've got a small little mixer at home, um, to use it as a sound source. And there's some quite historic stuff about using the studio as an instrument. You can kind of look back at <coughs> some quite innovators that, um, like Pierre Schaefer and Brian Eno that have championed this stuff. And the reggae crew as well. And this is Ben and Nod as well, like Scratch Perry and King Tubby. They used the mixing desk as much more as, it, as an instrument. So I'm going to try and attempt uh, to do the same. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to feed the auxiliary back in on a channel on itself. So the idea is, um, and I must um, bring in a little caution with this as well, is that it comes with a bit of a health warning that you could break the equipment or um, your ears. So you have to be very careful when you're using working with feedback. Um, so what I'm going to do is just try and send out the auxiliary back in the channel. And what happens is, is the cheaper the mixing desk you've got, the noisier it likely is. Because basically what will happen is you'll amplify the noise in the circuit. And that goes around. So it can be quite desirable. Or undesirable. It depends how this goes. Um, so I'm going to slowly bring up the master mic. One infinite loop now, around the aux back into the channel. Um, so, what happens with the EQs on these is quite interesting, really, because it will actually give you like something you can totally shape. So, if I move the low frequency EQ, so it goes down in pitch, if I move it up, uh, down to where the tenor is, it goes up in pitch. And if I use the mid range,
sound that we use. Right? So, how do I make it sound a little bit more musical and really work? Make it sound so it's in, it's got some sort of rhythm. I've got a drum machine here, which is a TRAS, a bunch of drum sounds.